I play Clash of Clans. I max my village before upgrading the town hall. Strategy games and city builder games and dragon breeding games. What is the appeal to them? Usually I'm the one to ask myself questions, but this one I'm asked by my friends. You still play this game? Laughing emoji, laughing emoji, laughing emoji. Shut, shut the fuck up before I delete your Fortnite. Let me talk about my passion for these games, which is seasonal by the way. And since we're entering the summer right now, I'm kinda losing my feelings. Around the winters when I typically reinstall city skylines, clash of clans, most especially Stronghold Crusader HD. Now I know how this game sounds and looks, Tower ready, sir. Tower ready, sir. but it's such an amazing experience with siblings and friends. It's almost like playing Tekken 4 or Peace 2012. It's nostalgic and fun and competitive. Although this year we haven't done it, so maybe next year. Bro and sis, if you're watching, I miss you. Let's play Stronghold like the old times I actually know how to play now, please. I've been playing Clash of Clans since I took my first breath of air at the age of 5. That's right, people start breathing at the age of 5. I found an iPhone 4 in August 2 of 2012 and I downloaded this thing and I've been playing ever since. When people hear me say this, they think that I've maxed out everything and won championships and shit, but nah man, I'm still at Town Hall level 10 which at this point is like only halfway through the game. Back in 2015, this would have been an elite tier village only acquired by pay to win, but god they've milked this game with the updates. Thing is, as I said, I play this game seasonally, which you know, every summer I lose my progress either to accidentally choosing the wrong Google Play account, or switching devices, or simply clicking cancel when it asks if I want to recover the account. Man, I hate mobile gaming. I think my love for such games stemmed from me trying out SimCity on a flip phone, now I know this sounds ridiculous, but I could swear to god this game was there on my mom's flippy little phone in 2011, although the game's release date is like 2 years after that. Maybe it was a crappy off-brand version, but it was there, either on the phone or somewhere else, I don't know, I played the game. Anyways, needless to say, I had zero understanding of the game as I couldn't speak English back then, and the only way to play the game was through a small crappy phone d-pad. Not even a d-pad, just a square. Now for some reason my 2 year old brain loved the idea of managing a home with people in it, and having a house and a wife and stuff. I think all kids love to be responsible and think of themselves as adults. They want to grow up as soon as possible, then to realize that it's the worst thing that could ever happen to an innocent child. Yeah, growing up is the worst thing ever, but it's not only kids. Everyone loves the autonomy that city builder games give. To carve roads and build houses and train armies, you feel omnipotent as you escape to a place where you have unlimited control to do anything about anything that you like or dislike. And how attractive does that sound? Anyhow, SimCity later evolved into me playing Clash of Clans and Stronghold, as well as some other city builder games like that dragon breeding game. God, I loved breeding dragons so much. I especially loved watching How to Train Your Dragon, just to see how far the romance would get, not between Hiccup and Astrid, but between the black dragon and the white dragon. Dragons got game and I've still got no maidens, man, what the fuck. Building a city or a village and tending to its needs and watching it grow and expand has always felt great. It's like watching your little baby grow up and every time you upgrade the town hall, it's the most rewarding feeling ever. It's almost like you're having the kid's birthday party and when it gets to town hall level 13, they unlock the Gigajiz shooter <coughs> or the erupting volcano depending on the kid's gender. Many new things unlock that you can explore, upgrade, and build, which is the most satisfactory feeling as you reap the rewards of your quote unquote productivity. You know, some people have unproductive lives and need something to fill their void with. And so Clash of Clans makes them feel less guilty about their messy room because, hey, at least their village is organized and clean. The pain of seeing your village suffering after an attack is like seeing your kid get sick, you know? It makes you want to protect it, feed it vitamins, rebuild it stronger, make it self-sufficient, whether that's by upgrading defenses or restructuring the layout of the village or however. The designing aspect of these games gives you the same peaceful feeling that you get when you're building a house in Minecraft. Whether it's lining up the power lines and city skylines, or perfectly matching up buildings and stronghold to satisfy your OCD, or express how retarded you are by building roads like this in city skylines, all of this allows for self-expression. It's the best in Clash of Clans for me because you can see your friend's creative designs, compare them to yours, and ask them for the most hostile friendly battle ever and feel your ego get bigger as you breed destruction in their hometown. God, I love breeding a lot of things. Another way some of these games are similar to Minecraft are by their emergent narrative. City Skylines has a whole knockoff version of Twitter in the game to boost your morale when you're doing stuff right or mock you if you're doing stuff wrong. Simulator games such as SimCity and YouTuber Simulator are especially good with giving the space for a narrative to play out and emerge out of thin air. Your own narrative, your own story. If you're interested in the ways narrative can be and not be, I expand more on it in another video. 
The competitive side of strategy games is crazy fun for intellectual beings because it doesn't require much practice gaming skill, unlike current competitive games where you need hours of religious, cruel and rigorous training, which is also cool and is its own attraction for 7 year olds. But take an adult game like Stronghold Crusader, you only need a basic understanding of the game, a major in economics, a minor in history, and you need to be a grandmaster in chess, and about a million other real world skills, but most of these are just basic logical things that come with an increased level of IQ. I love to play these games just to flex my strategical intellect. It's also why I'm very into chess. You checkmate someone and it feels like they've been silently murdered by you. The whole room goes quiet and the lighting changes and it becomes an anime scene. Very cool until you're the one who's being checkmated. The intellectual frustration and the feeling of stupidity that comes with the loss is unreal. Especially when you underestimate your opponent. You make assumptions about your dark-skinned friend and you think, huh, they'll never win. Till they do, that's when you go forth But hey, ignorance is bliss, so you may as well bliss the world and commit deleting.